Well, welcome back once again to another adventure. Thanks for joining me. I've been kind of MIA for a little while, and you got to bear with me. I'm a little bit, a uh, little bit of a cold, so if I sound kind of rough, pardon me. Uh, I've been MIA for a little while, so my last video was in. Uh, well, I started off in out in Branson, Missouri, and places like that. Did another famous great video out there, and been kind of missing for a little while but i'm back on another famous grave video back out here in cemetery i think i've been to this cemetery here uh cave hill cemetery in louisville i think i've been out here more at this cemetery than any other cemetery i've done for famous graves they're just the more i do research the more people i find out here and we've got a few more people we're going to talk about out here and as well as other places as well I come out here to Cave Hill Cemetery, and I, I've mentioned this before. If you've never been out here, you got to come out here. It's in Louisville, Kentucky, and it's just a, it's a, not only is it a massive cemetery, it's a very beautiful cemetery. I mean, just, there's statues, like, everywhere in this place. Like, right behind me, this is uh, the grave, well, the future grave of the inventor of the plastic ball valve the union ball valve which is like plastic you see live in like plumbing and stuff industrial plumbing and everything like that uh, i've messed with him before but this uh this gentleman is not dead yet he is still alive but this is his future grave where he will be buried and you can see one of the statues of jesus right back behind here and then you have this other beautiful mausoleum here you've got this beautiful stained glass window let me get up here you can see a jesus on that stained glass window with some sheep and you got some more statues down here of what looks like a pegasus and then like an angel like i said these statues are just everywhere throughout here you got some more right here it looks like some birds or maybe that's doves. I'm not sure. Looks like birds. But it's, like I said, they're just everywhere scattered throughout this whole cemetery. I think this is really beautiful. This stained glass window on this monument. That is really pretty. That's a really neat idea. I really like that. So are you a big basketball fanatic? I used to be. I'm not. I still love basketball, but I'm not as heavy. Uh, into basketball is what I used to be, uh, knowing all the players and stuff. But there's one person right here that I think a lot of people know and will recognize the name or recognize this this next gentleman right here. This is the grave of Derek Smith. So a little bit about Derek Smith. He played for Louisville Cardinals in college. He uh, was part of the 1980 championship team. And uh, he played for the uh, Los Angeles Clippers, Boston Celtics, Sacramento Kings during his NBA career. He was also a uh, assistant coach, I think, for the Washington Bullets. And he is also the uh, originator of the High Five. You see, here's another example of some real beautiful monuments, these beautiful bronze statues. You don't have to look too hard to find them. They're pretty well scattered out through here, and you can easily find them. Our next spot here in Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville takes us to the singer slash founder of the punk rock slash grunge band, the Gits, Mia Zapata. Mia, of course, like I said, was the founder of the band the gets was on the verge of making it huge in the rock and roll industry and was really uh doing well you know it was right when the grunge era was starting to take off and you know it was really popular you know with nirvana and stuff sadly though mia was murdered on july 7th of 1993 joining several others of the 27 club well, now I'm in Centerfield, Kentucky at Mount Tabor Methodist Church slash Cemetery, uh, which is about 30 minutes north of Louisville. 
in case those who are wondering where in the world that's at. And there's a very famous director, uh, movie director that uh, is laid to rest here. And you may recognize some of his films and you may not. Here's your resting place of director D.W. Griffith. Like I said, you may have heard some of his movies. Uh, it's probably his most controversial movie he did back, way back when, was Birth of a Nation. And there's actually a clip of Birth of a Nation on Forrest Gump. When uh, Forrest is sitting there talking about his, uh, his descendant from General Nathan Bedford Forrest and everything, uh, you can uh, you see part of that movie in uh, in that movie. A movie within a movie. Some other notable movies of his was the movie, his first talking movie was Abraham Lincoln in 1930. And another fantastic movie, very elaborate, was uh, Intolerance. And a movie set for that, uh, for that movie actually stayed there for a long time. Uh, untouched and just abandoned. It's like one of the largest movie sets that they had ever built. He was also the first person to coin the phrase lights, camera, action on his movie Oak California, 1910. Mr. Griffith is also uh, known for creating several filming techniques, which a lot of is used still today, like the Irish shot, which is the purpose of taking a a frame and and focusing in on one thing so like you take the shot see this tree right here and it would darkness would surround it or something and focus right in on that tree or it would start the scene would start from there and the screen would lighten out on that you see a lot of in old movies and stuff you could check out the Irish shot and you could see a lot of examples of that He's also crea uh, the supposed to be the creator, the creator of the flashback, which everybody knows flashback stuff. You know, you go look at Scooby Doo and you see a lot of flashbacks. He's also credited for creating the mask shot, which a lot of vloggers like myself use. It's a very helpful tool. The mask shot is pretty much where you take a shot and you have another shot over the top of that so you're masking what's over so I'm reading a sign here but I don't want people to see me reading this whole sign so I will go around and I will film something else or I will walk around something while I'm reading that sign you see me walking around and stuff and that's a mask shot so you're filming putting a, a shot over top of another shot so you're just kind of hiding what's what's behind it. And it's a really neat technique. We leave Cave Hill Cemetery and now find ourselves at Zachary Taylor Cemetery, National Cemetery. We can find the graves of thousands of men and women who have served our country. I'm not just here to pay respects to the men and women who served our country. I'm also here to visit our 12th president of the United States, President Zachary Taylor. He was president from 1849 to 1850, a very short term, sadly passing away while he was in office after attending a July 4th uh, celebration at the Washington Monument due to a stomach virus, I do believe. And they have erected this beautiful memorial of him or for him however you want to say it prior to becoming president he was a career man in the military he was a major general serving in the Mexican American War and also at the War of 1812 you can see the beautiful presidential logo Presidential seal right here. 
But this is actually where he lays to rest at. Not this big, not underneath this, but he is actually laid to rest inside here, along with his wife. You can see the coins people have placed here in respects. You can also see, can I see in here a little bit where President Taylor and his wife lay to rest at. He lays on the left side and she is resting on the right. But this is not the original uh, mausoleum for President Taylor. It's actually down here was the original place that he was laid to rest at. You see it's much older looking, but they still keep it decorated very nicely. I'm not exactly sure when he was transferred over to this new one. But you could also read on the first there, it says, uh, first burial site of President Taylor. It's a very nice cemetery. So our last stop here in Kentucky takes us to the city of Bardstown Cemetery. And I uh, beg pardon on the noise in the background. They're shredding up some limbs. So it might be kind of loud. I'm sorry if it is. But there is, uh, when, when you come out here to Kentucky, I've mentioned this before, but what do you think about when you come to Kentucky? There's a lot of different things. You think of the Kentucky Derby. You think of uh, Louisville Slugger. You think of Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know, uh, Kentucky Bluegrass Music. But there's another thing that a lot of people think of when they think of Kentucky, and that's the Kentucky bourbon. No trip to Kentucky is complete without paying a visit to the man who made the business like it is today, Mr. Jim Beam. Mr. Beam was a business tycoon turning his family bourbon business into an iconic American industry. Under his watch, the business thrived despite the Prohibition era. During the Prohibition era, uh, he left the distilling business to grow citrus down in Florida, among other things. When the Prohibition ended in 1934, he fired up his stills and moved his whole distillery business near his home, which is uh, where it sits today. And from that point forward, the bourbon was called, simply put, Jim Beam. Well, we leave Kentucky. We jump back across the river, over back over to Indiana, a little bit northern, getting a little north Indiana, up to Seymour, Indiana, where you're going to find the hometown of singer, rock and roll legend, John Mellencamp. But more about him and another video. Because we're here at the Riverview Cemetery here in Seymour. And there's somebody very special uh, buried out here that's close to, uh, two people buried out here. It's really close to Mr. Mellencamp. Check us out. This is the resting place of Mr. John Mellencamp's mother, Marilyn Mellencamp, passed away. Uh, January 30th of 2012. You gotta wonder if uh, John comes out here and lays flowers out here for his mom and his grandparents out here. So directly next to uh, John's mother's grave is lays his brother, Ted, who uh, sadly passed away in 2016. Now, Ted... Uh, spent eight years, I think it was, as a journeyman, which is an electrician, uh, working with an electric company. Before he uh, left that and became working as a tour manager for uh, his brother John. And he's also uh, credited for helping build the careers of not only his brother John, but Kiss, uh, Bon Jovi, Cinderella, Tears for Fears, The Scorpions... Uh, the list goes on and on. So finally now we're at the last spot here on this famous grave tour. 
And we're still in Seymour, still in the same cemetery. And you can hear the church bells ringing in the background. And it is, uh, what, 4 o'clock? 5 o'clock? 4. 4 o'clock. Something like it. I'll get the times right one day. So anyways, we have been to Louisville, and we have seen the grave of Colonel Sanders. But what you didn't know was after he passed away, his nephew took over. This is the grave of James Sanders, and he looks identical to Colonel Sanders. And and I stumbled upon this grave kind of by accident. This originally wasn't going to be on here, uh, but I was driving through the cemetery, and I stumbled across this, did a little bit of research, and... I come, and I seen this like, what in the world? Because Colonel Sanders is in Louisville, not here. But this is a nephew of Colonel Sanders, James Wilbur Sanders. And after Colonel Sanders passed away, he took over as the face of KFC doing appearances and stuff like that. Of course, born in 1917, he was a World War II Navy veteran. And, Sadly, of course, passed away unexpectedly at his house in 1989. But he uh, really did look just like Colonel Sanders, just a little bit heavier than the original Colonel Sanders, but uh, the hair, everything looked just like him. Well, that's going to do it for this famous grave tour. I've got church bells <laughs> chiming in the background. Dorothy's laughing at me for some unknown reason. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed it. And this is your all's video. You all voted on Facebook that you wanted another Famous Grave video. These these videos blow up like crazy. You Everybody loves them. So I want to thank you all for watching. And I will catch you all next time.